Hey, what's happening, guys? I thought today we might talk about this little guy right here. This chip, this strange-looking chip, is the TDA-2030, which is a Class AB amplifier chip. Now, if you think back to the times we've talked about amplifiers, a Class A amplifier, which is the most linear but the least efficient, operates for the entire sine wave cycle from 0 to 360 degrees. A Class B amplifier operates on only half the signal, either from 0 to 180 or 181 to 360. It's more efficient, but it is hardly linear and not very useful in audio because it's going to produce some distortions. But if you take the Class A and the Class B and you kind of put them together, you get a Class AB amplifier, which is also known as a push-pull amplifier. And its characteristic is it is almost as linear as a Class A amplifier because it operates for more than 180 degrees but less than 360. So instead of being on all the time, getting hot and wasting power, it's off for a small part of the cycle. And that works out pretty well. Now, what we were talking about is this little guy here. This is the TDA 2030. And it's from ST.com. Now, it has a wide voltage supply up to 36 volts, but you don't have to go that high. It will operate as low as 6 volts, but 12 volts is a good place to start. Single or split supply. That means if you think of this somewhat as an op amp, you can operate it as an op amp with a uh, plus VS and a minus VS. But it's not necessary. You can operate it with a single supply as well. It has short circuit protection and a thermal out or a thermal shutdown. And you see, typically it provides 14 outputs of power. Now that of course depends on your input voltage, um, the impedance of the speaker, and those sorts of things. But this is a really oh this by the way, this uh, package with the five leads is called the Pentawatt package. Just thought I'd throw that in there. So couple more things to talk about with this amplifier. Here are some of its electrical characteristics. So supply voltage of plus or minus 18 or 36 volts. Input voltage, blah, blah, blah. So here we go. Come down here and we talk about our supply voltage. Minimum 6 we build something, we build it with probably 12 volts. And its quiescent current drain is 40 milliamps. That's not that small, so this thing's gonna drain power even when it's using. That's the class A part of the amplifier in there. It's always working. Now our input bias is 0.2 to 2 microamps, and our offset voltage is plus 2 to plus 20 millivolts. A couple things to keep in mind. It's pretty good on distortion, half a percent. Now, our frequency response, our minus 3 dB, so this is basically, we'll call it the low cut frequency, is 10 to 140 hertz, depending on how you set it up. That's great for audio stuff. Uh, drain current, 900, 500, let's split the difference, call it 600 milliamps. Okay, so what I've done here, is I have drawn up a single supply uh, class AB amplifier here and I thought we'd talk about it and go over it. So the first thing we want to talk about are the resistors and if we start with RA and RB these are our inverting 
or our, yeah, in, our, our inverting and non-inverting, uh, non-inverting input biasing. Now we're going to run these at a hundred K each. Now, if you go higher than that, you're going to have poor frequency attenuation. And if you go lower than that, you could end up getting into some sort of oscillation. Next up, we have R3. And this is our non-inverting input bias as well. So it's also going to be 100K. Now, R4, this one over here is our for frequency stability and it is just going to be one ohm so the reason that we want to have that is just to keep everything stable if you increase the value of that you could have os uh, oscillation at higher frequencies if you decrease it probably not much going to happen but you're at one ohm how low are you going to go right okay next up we have uh, r1 which is this guy right here and R2, where is R2? R2, where are you? Oh, sorry, we didn't use R2. That's for the um, double supply. So R1 is our closed loop gain setting. And the value we're going to put here is 150K. If you increase it, you get an increase in gain. If you decrease it, you get a decrease in gain. So, you know, you can see it's, it's pretty easy. All right, let's talk capacitors then. Capacitor C1 right here. Um, this is going to be that's more right at one microfarad, and that's going to be our non. Uh, blah, 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 can't talk. Our input DC decoupling. It was going to that non-inverter. That's why I was getting myself confused. So this is just to decouple any DC that's coming in on our input. This is our input right here. And also, you know, you would also have to have the other half of the signal, the ground. Now, C2 is our inverting input uh, decoupler. It's going to be 22 microfarad. Um, if you increase it, you increase... Oh, I'm sorry, if you decrease it, you increase the low frequency cutoff. So, you know... You can play around with those values a little bit. Uh, C3 and C5, the, this is a point 0.1. Put point on the right side there, Paul. Point 0.1 and 100 microfarad. Now, you've seen those numbers a lot of times. You know exactly what they mean. Those are our supply voltage bypasses. Then we come down here to C7 which is 0.22 microfarad. And C7 is used for frequency stability. It's just keeping our frequency stable. You change it, you could end up with oscillation. And C8, this guy right here, is our upper frequency cutoff. And uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be 2200 microfarad probably could go up to 3300 if you increase it you decrease your bandwidth if you if you decrease it you increase your bandwidth so oh and let's not forget our diodes diode one and diode two they can be pretty much anything so we just like a one in 4001 and they simply prevent voltage spikes from hitting the uh this is the plus V and this is the minus V. So it simply prevents voltage spikes from hitting the power supply to the TDA 2030 chip. Now, if you put a uh, four ohm resistor on, four ohm resistor, a four ohm speaker, you're going to get one thing. If you put eight ohms on, you're going to get a different thing that will affect the gain that will affect the power output because ohm's law you change the resistance in this case impedance then it affects both your voltage and your current as well
All right? All right, you guys think about this for today. And tomorrow we'll build the circuit and try it out, all right? All right. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment and share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all my patrons, especially Dave. Big thanks to all you for watching. That's it. I'm out. Peace.